to the old man Wade Show. I am your host, the God of Stuff and the Lord of Laughter, the man who needs to shave because he has no hair on the top of his head, but for some reason, God gives us I'm hair on the sides. Old man Wade, and I'm sitting here with the genius of justification, Just Greg. What's up? And to his right, we have the CEO of Panda Care, the happy, the locked, <laughs> Miss Panda. <laughs> All that? All that. Hey. So I'm actually getting in the habit of not saying dreads. Good. Because they're I'm, not dreads, they're locked. And explain that again, why? For people. Because there's nothing dreadful about them. It was the colonizers who called them dreads. Why did they call them dreads? Because they thought they looked dreadful. Okay. I think I remember hearing um, Ravel talk about that, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I forgot. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Panda here is a morning person, so she's, like, bounced off the wall. Uh, not so much today, but, yeah, typically I am. And Greg's got his uh his Maria energy going on. Are y'all sick? <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I was sick a couple of weeks ago. No, same same here. Yeah, same I here. can't. Nah, I was. I'm folks. fine now. Nah, I'm good now. Like it's been I'm like fine. two weeks. It's like it's funny. No, three weeks. Like <clears throat> Lavelle got sick. Then I got sick. Oh, was something? And then going Greg on got Lavelle sick. Lavelle and Greg. Yeah. It's a whole three. We time. weren't even around each other. Mm -hmm. It was that one day when we y'all came over here to go. Yeah, but there was other people that I was around that was getting sick too. Oh. Y'all need to that, drink so your like, ginger and lemon tea every day, and you won't have to deal with this. My my aunt, yo, I swear to you, and this is gonna sound—it's true. This is gonna sound completely conspiracy theory, so I'm just gonna get it out there. I swear to you, I never get sick until I get the flu shot. And like, this that's why I don't get it. This is the, I have to. Mm -hmm. My job. Oh, I don't get it. I have to. Like, I really don't have an option because because like if, if I happen to get sick, and I happen to walk around someone who's got like a, a compromised compromised immune system. Then it could like fuck them up. You Drink know? your ginger and lemon. It's better than the flu shot. <laughs> I don't want the flu shot, but I, if, I, if I want the job, I'm I telling have... you, it's better than the flu shot. And I agree and with put you. Put some cayenne pepper in it, bro. You're good. But I have to. No. I, I have to take the flu shot. Ah. It's either that or don't get the job. Tell them you took it and you didn't. Oh yeah, because because you know, working where I work at, they don't have any um, <laughs> idea <laughs> whether or not. <laughs> did you get it? Yeah. Of course I did. Tell them that you, know, you went to your own little doctor. <laughs> Oh, man. But it's funny. Like, I literally never, like, I never get it. And this is the first year I've gotten it in, like, almost a decade. And it's the first time I got sick. But, so. What was your worst symptom? Um, <laughs> since it, uh, I wasn't a cause. I wasn't achy. It was, um, I was mostly, like, yeah, it was more, like, weak and congested. I had a really severe um, sore throat. And I had, I had that it too. for like a week and a half. No, nah, <clears throat> mine only lasted like a few days. I had to go and get antibiotics to get. To was get it strep? It wasn't. I thought it was strep, but I'm it wasn't. You, drink your ginger and lemon tea. I'll I don't drink that dirty water. <laughs> 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 you get the ginger, you get the lemon, you put some hot water over it, or you can mm. boil the two together and then drink the water. I'm telling ah. you. Okay. Well, uh, don't say I didn't tell you. It's funny. I actually have ginger um, in the uh, in the refrigerator, and I meant to grab it yesterday. I, I love I love ginger so much. Like I I fucking love I it. keep ginger in my house. Ginger and lemon is a staple in my house at all times. You're also I must say you're also like super. I would yeah. Would you call yourself super holistic? No, I'm trying to be, but I'm not there yet. Yeah, but you're like you're Still trying. Got some work to do. Yeah, I mean you're trying, you're getting there, so I, I dig it. But it's me personally, like I would much. I hate taking pills. So I have I. To, I have to take my crazy pills, so I like you know what I mean. I have to. But... The only time I find myself taking a pill is when I have um, a migraine. 
and I take Excedrin. So I just try not to get to that level of pisosity that I need to take something. Yeah. But, so less stress, no headaches. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. I, uh, have you ever seen Sin City? No. So Greg will get this joke, and the people who have heard it will take this. There's a scene with dude Marv. He has to go see a psychiatrist for his pills because otherwise, like he like he like hallucinates. I think right, and, like or sees, but like he goes crazy. So every time I take my pills, like every night I go, you know, take your pills. Everything will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly that. No pun intended. <laughs> Oh, it may not have been intended, but it was there. Oh, man. <clears throat> so before we get into this, I want to talk about um, a hero uh, that I thought was great. So you guys know what Planned Parenthood is, right? Mm-hmm. Planned Parenthood? Yeah. You also know that Planned Parenthood isn't just for abortions. Yes, it's a clinic. Uh, so a clinic for women who can, they can get birth Anything. control. Yeah. Mammograms. Pap smears. Pap smears. All that. All that. Yeah. But unfortunately, some people go, oh, it's an abortion place, and they're sucking up babies and catapulting them across the river or some shit like that. Because, yeah, it's nothing like that. So, I found this thing, it, uh, this this story, and I couldn't wait to, I wait to actually talk about it. Meet uh, Mary Namere, a badass woman who single-handedly broke up a Planned Parenthood protest by chanting words, yeast infection. Oh, my goodness. All right. Over the last few weeks, Mary had seen a woman holding a sign that read, Abortion, abortion Kills Children, outside a Planned Parenthood building near her office. Mary said that Mary said she is a supporter of Planned Parenthood, the nonprofit organization that provides reproductive health and family planning support in the U.S. and intent, un, in, excuse me, unintentionally because it helped her personally over the years. When she was 20 years old, the clinic treated her for UTIs and yeast infections. They also provided her with first, her first birth control pills. Uh, Planned Parenthood is a vital resource for so many people, she told BuzzFeed News. Told BuzzFeed News. Sorry, I'm just waking up, people. Uh, we have to look beyond the pro-life, pro-choice debate and recognize the organization is there to, out there to help some. Ooh, excuse me. Provide some people. Ah, provide some of the most important care. Excuse me to our sensitive medical needs. So apparently, while all this was going on yesterday, or so it goes. The day this had Mary approached the uh, anti-parent uh, parenthood protesters, yelling. Yeast infections and holding a sign. The protesters kept their children away from the yeasty cries, so I kept moving closer. She joked. Initially, they had spread across, the, spread down the sidewalks on both sides of the street. But after yelling and some kicks in my part, they held it together and eventually left. Good stuff. So shout out to her because that was fucking great. Fuck those people. Like, why can't people just let people live? Because that's too much work. That's somebody got to be minding somebody's business. I never got that. Uh, Greg, you listened to Joe Biden's podcast last week? The one that came on Saturday? Yeah. So I bring it up because I stopped after that dude Verb was talking. Like, oh, you, well, you eat chicken, so you don't know what you're talking about. And blah, 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 blah. It's affecting your brain. like, dog, shut up. I don't care. And I just moved on. Why is that? Because it's like, I don't mind, like, <clears throat> like mom, Falcon's thinking about going vegan. Like, it may, may be healthier for um, with everything going on with them. I'm like, all right, cool. And if she does that, fine. I'm all for that. But to tell someone that they don't know what they're talking about because they eat meat is really pretentious and really douchey. I mean, <clears throat> I guess he was trying to call him out for being like contra- contradictory, but no, 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 not that part. When he was, they were having a conversation about like rap, and he goes, "Well, your mind doesn't really work right because you eat chicken and smoke cigarettes." It's like, like dog shut. Everything <laughs> is bad for us, though. Yep. Yeah. Too, Pretty much everything. Everything we're is. We're all picking our poison right now. Even like, healthy food. Too much yeah. of it is bad for you. Yeah, if you eat vegetables all day, you'll probably die from not getting enough protein or some shit. Oh, you'll probably uh, have diarrhea for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's way too much fiber. It is. It like, is. You, so, you can not You can only you, eat so much fruit. Otherwise, you're taking in too much sugar. Yep. You need a balance uh, of can, everything. Like, yeah, you need a balance of everything. The nutrients, vitamins, and all this other stuff. Um... As long as you're getting a balanced diet, you're good. And some and some exercise, you're good. Yeah. You don't even need like like supplements to pills and stuff. They help, but as long as you have a balanced diet, you don't even need to take supplements unless you have a doctor tell you that you have a deficiency a deficiency somewhere with like vitamin D or calcium yeah. or something like that. <laughs> Just saying. Anybody anybody here have a vitamin D deficiency? I, I do. do. <laughs> <laughs> For different 
reasons, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> He says, I'm not getting enough sun. And I'm just not getting enough vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I it's funny. I, I, I would be the name of it. <laughs> I am. It's actually going to be called vitamin D deficiencies. I agree. I like that. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all are fucking yellow, yellow wild right now. Oh, man. So yeah, that's what I had, and I just I had to bring that up because it was kind of annoying, and people were just like, "Oh, whatever." And like, no, like it's like the same people like when you see uh, uh, the the folks who are preaching on the side of the corner, which is fine, but like if I'm like if I'm like no, thank you, that should be the end of it. Yeah, don't if, be pushy. If you push a pamphlet in my face, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna throw it. Oh, stop it! I, oh God. Um, so I don't know if I told the story on the show before, but it was one one day um, when me and Greg were living together. Um, it was like, Jesus, bro. yeah, it was like the Labor Day Memorial Day and the phone rang and the few, not the phone rang, the doorbell rang and I'm like, oh, it must be somebody for Greg. So I didn't bother getting up, but then it kept, it kept ringing and I text Greg. I'm like, yo, um, are you home? He goes, nah. And I'm like, all right. <clears throat> so I got up. Come on. They were ringing the doorbell for like five minutes. Jehovah's Witness? Yes. Jesus. On a fucking holiday. They don't care. They don't celebrate holidays. But dog, after five minutes. Leave. Like, yo, and it was funny. The so most, I, they must have saw, like, a curtain move or something. And figured but I was way in the back. I know. You were way in the back. So, I'm sitting. So, I get, so I go up there. I go, uh, can I, I'm like, no, maybe someone's in trouble. I'm like, hey, can I help you? I'm like, oh, are you? I was like, oh, I'm like, are you kidding me right now? And I went off. And normally, I normally I don't do this. But I was like, yo, are you kidding me right now? It was like, it was like it's 8 o'clock in the morning. On a holiday. You woke me up for this shit? The fuck is wrong with you? And Maria heard me was just like. Mark, I'm like no, fuck these people. And she was like, Mark, close the fucking door, and like close, slam the fuck, slam the door in their face. And I'm normally not that mad, but it was like the inc- just being that inconsiderate or early in the morning on a fucking holiday, kiss my entire ass. Oh, that's a lot of kissing. All right, we're gonna take a break and be right back. Fuck you. <laughs> you know, fuck your old. And we are back on the old man Wade show. Hey, don't forget to follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Old Man Wade Com. That's O L D M A N W A D E C O M. That's about right. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Old Man Wade Show on Facebook. Uh, uh, Amanda, what are your handles? Uh, I don't know because I have to get new ones, so I can't think of them off the top of my head right now. <laughs> what do you have to get new ones? Somebody hacked my accounts. Really? Yeah. You didn't know when you got like a random friend request from uh, Amanda. You were like, "What the fuck is this?" No, I did. Yeah, I sent you a new friend request. When? Recently. We're new friends on Facebook and Instagram. Someone oh. took the SIM card out my phone and reset all my stuff and then closed up my accounts. All of them. Yeah. So so they stole your phone and no, took the SIM card? No, I was asleep and they took the SIM card out of my phone, put it in theirs, and reset all my stuff. Someone that you know? Yeah. Okay. And this person, so this person um, shot me and I am one morning. You as, and like six other of my friends to so like, try to snoop and pry and get information, which ended didn't work. Is this someone that you were dating? Yeah. Wow. And so like. And it yeah. ended up backfiring because the information that they were looking for wasn't. Wasn't, wasn't there because he ain't doing anything. Wasn't legit. <laughs> like, so, you, hmm. so like, so. Um, yeah. So um, I get this message from. Amanda on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm on my tour. From Amanda with quotes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda. <laughs> Amanda. <laughs> yeah. This is from Amanda. Um, <laughs> so, and I'm sitting there talking to her. I'm like, oh my God, this sounds like I'm, I'm listening. To, but then little things just st- didn't start to make sense because it was like names that I'd never heard of before. And then one name was someone like you never talked to. And I was like, this sounds weird. I asked something, and then the message just stopped. And I was like... Yeah. And then like, and we was, talk all the time. So the next day, he texts me. He's like, can I give you my opinion on the whole situation? And I'm like, I thought he knew what had happened. And I was like, yeah, go ahead. And he's like, so I feel like da 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 And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And he's like, from the message you sent me last night. I didn't send you no message last <laughs> night. What are you talking about? Come to find out, people were blocked, all kind of stuff. I'm like, I didn't block you. And I had to tell everybody what had happened. And they was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Why yeah. would he do that? 
Because he's a bitch ass, In, bitch ass nigga. That's why. Insecurities. Don't trigger me, please. Don't I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not triggering you, but that, that's, <laughs> because a, that's some bitch ass nigga shit, though. Like to go in there and steal someone's stuff. Calling people through Snapchat. People thought I was calling them at 2 30 in the morning, and they were like, Are you okay? And then they come to find out they were talking to this person. I'm like, I would never call anybody at 2 30 in the morning because, one, I don't like talking on the phone, and if something is wrong with me at 2 30 in the morning, I need to call the police because you can't help me. So here's my thing with insecurity, right? When, first of all, stupid for me, idiot! For me, insecurity, up until now, at where I'm at in my life right now, insecurity is a deal breaker for me. So, I, I dealt with it, I dealt with it quite a bit. Yeah. In the past few years, on the receiving end, not on my end, there's nothing insecure about me. Well, healthy, I have a, like, everybody has a healthy level of insecurity. Right. right. You know. That's what I have, but past that threshold, no. I get it. But it's a deal breaker for me, and it's 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 just hell to deal with. It is. And based on like stuff that I've seen, heard, been through, and even read about online, like you know, trying to figure out the psychology of it and everything, um, I found that people who are insecure in that fashion about, you know, cheating, infidelity, and all this other stuff, they're either, they're on either side of the spectrum. They're either like that because they've been traumatized, they've been hurt, they've been betrayed, cheated on, all this other stuff. Or they're the one or, being the yeah, cheater, they're the doing other the side betraying, who've and done, so they think you're doing it too. Yeah, and that's if, where if, that was at. And it's just like <laughs> people who are habitual liars. When we all know someone who's an who's an habitual liar. Yes. How many times have we confronted them about lying and they instantly got upset? Oh, what do you mean? Or they're always bro, bro. questioning you about something that you said in total truth, but because they lie so much, they don't know who to believe. Right. Yeah. It's the same exact thing. It is. <laughs> so, so I'll speak on the um, opposite side of that as being a incredibly insecure man. Like you know what I mean? When me and my wife first started dating. Like, anybody who's been in a relationship with me on any level, whether it be romantic or friendship, they know I am super insecure. And it's also, it's gotten to the point now, what, <clears throat> not so much now. Now I can, I can recognize when I'm being a certain way, and I can take a step back and come back and apologize. Like, I remember we had a conversation recently, Greg, mm -hmm. and I took something way too serious. Because I was just in my own space, oh, in my yeah, own head. And I was, like, I was fucked up. Like, you know what I mean? But this had nothing to do with Greg at all. Like, you know what I mean? And so I had to go back and go, hey, Greg, sorry. This had nothing to do with you. I'm just, like, you know what I mean? And I think there was, in like, or my, Greg might hit me up and be like, hey, blah, blah, blah. And I, like, you know, I didn't mean to offend you. I'm like, no, nah, it had nothing to do with you, dog. This was, this was all me. Like, you know what I mean? I almost ruined my marriage when me and Maria were dating because of my insecurities. Because I couldn't get over myself. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Thankfully, I've never been, like, skeezy you know what I mean like I wasn't like going through her phone or checking her emails and shit like that but I was so um uh, unsure of myself as a man like you know what I could provide for her that it almost ruined her like our relationship like you know what I mean hell it almost it, it literally almost cost me my life you know what I mean so it sucks and I'm not speaking up for people who are insecure I'm just saying I've been there but you have to get over that shit because if you don't, you have you can ruin your life. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't... And it's one of those things at the end of it. Like, you don't realize what you have until it's gone. And you don't want to be in that position where you're like, fuck, I had a good one. Or, fuck, I could have did all these amazing things. If I could just get over myself. If I could just trust the person that I was with. You know what I mean? I was lucky enough to have someone who could see past that. Like, you know what I mean? But oh, but again, because I wasn't doing stupid shit like stealing SIM cards out of people's fucking phones. That's, like, that you know was what my I mean? deal breaker. Like I was. So Oof. how? So what was the source of that? Did you just feel like you weren't good enough for her, or what was it? That was that was a big part of it. That was, I would say that was a big part of it, but a lot of it was also uh, years of therapy. Like you find out you find out mm -hmm. a lot about yourself mm -hmm. when you go sit and talk to someone, and you can be completely honest with them. Like you start looking at things like. Uh, your past, um, 
without getting too deep into it, like, the situation I have with my parents, Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? And, like, people telling you, like, and it's funny when you, you you hear something a couple of times when you're, like, when you're in in a weird space, even if, even if you have a thousand people rooting for you, for some reason, five people telling you it won't happen, if they're, the, if they're close to you, those are the five things you'll remember. Uh, what's the Lupe line? Um, all you see is all my feats. All I see is all my flaws. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So it's just like little things like that, that really, that can really like be cancerous to like any relationship. You know what I mean? Um, especially if you're not one to talk about them and get these things out the out in the open. So like I've had uh, insecurities like, from everything that I do, like... Did you compare a lot? Um, no. I didn't do that. Okay. Um, one of the things, um, one of the things Valkyrie's never done is she's never actually, like, compared me to anybody else, unless it was something good. You know what I mean? Like, her fiancé died, Mm -hmm. and she'll see a lot of, like, uh, similarities, Mm -hmm. but she's never been, like, you're not like him, and then it, like, be like... to do this for me, but what you're doing. You know what I mean? That's toxic anyway. No. It, it's funny. It was never really a comparison thing to other men. It was just me looking at myself and going, "Am I good enough for this? Am I good? Am I doing enough here? Am I doing enough there? Why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing that?" And a lot of the things that I was talking about were just really, really stupid things. It was like, "Well, why am I not making a hundred thousand dollars so my wife can go back to school and, I, and doesn't doesn't have to work?" Right. Like shit like that. Like because of my um, level of education. I can't make a hundred thousand dollars like without the certain training and things that I in the drive that I have had for things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now maybe maybe I have a different drive. I have a different way of going about things. But I'm also again in a different space. This podcast I'm doing now I couldn't have done like by myself. Shit, five years ago. Like you know what I mean? So, but it's just like you learn. You kind of learn to deal with it. But I also think a lot of insecurities like you get over them by talking, admitting when you feel a certain way. Being in touch with you, like I'm an emotional person, but it was weird when you couldn't talk about. I couldn't really talk about my emotions to my parents. Like crying wasn't really something I could do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I can cry around Maria. Maria. I can cry around, cry around y'all. Like you know what I mean? I, I, I'm not sure if either one of you guys have seen me cry, but like you guys know that I can be emotional. Like you know what I mean? It's not just <clears throat> anger or happiness. Like I can be sad, but I can be vulnerable around you. So you know what I mean? It's a little different. Mm-hmm. So, but uh. <clears throat> But um, that stealing SIM card shit, that's some bitch-ass shit. <laughs> that's not even insecurity. That's bitch-ass yeah, shit. Yeah, when you told me that, I was thinking <coughs> it was some random, no. some random on the internet that hacked your accounts and was just sending no. like advertisements no. and shit to people. And I had to buy a, a new watch because they took my Samsung watch at the same time. What? Me. Yeah, if they could find more stuff. So why would you say he was like that without prying too much into your... Your situation. Why do you think he was like that? Do you think he's been hurt in the past? No, he's a bitch ass nigga. That's no, what. Besides, <laughs> besides that, was he uh, hurt in the past, or was he the 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 um the villain? He was the villain, and I dealt with a lot. I tolerated a lot during the relationship, and I just feel like he thought I was doing it at doing what he did. Like, as a payback type thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I really don't have the time and the energy for that. Running a business, being a single mother of three, like... I'm being a my friend. Son. Right. Being a sister. So, trying to have a social life, trying to eat healthy, trying to work out. My son is applying to colleges. My twins are looking for new middle school. Like... Yeah. <sighs> They try to tell you who you can and can't be friends with. <laughs> yeah. There was a time they, he they was like, "They want to know how you know this person." He Did went you sleep with them on my before? timeline blah, 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 blah. from like, 2010 on Facebook and said that Mark and I had something, and he hopes his wife knows because of the jokes we used to make. And then, like from 2010 on my timeline, I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, why like, would you go? <laughs> How do you have that much time? Yo. To scroll through someone's timeline. Years. And like, read their comments and their pictures. It went to it was to the point that I made all my albums private for me. So nobody could see my pictures. It was crazy. Yeah, insecurity is a bitch. I'm sorry. It's like It is. Like So now that you say that, like that's your 
that's your your deal breaker. Off. That's your deal breaker. Like it is for me to an extent. It depends on the type of insecurity the person has. Like if they can acknowledge it and speak about it and want to work on it, that's one thing. But if you're gonna be pointing fingers all day long, I can't. And see, that's the thing I don't I don't really like. If I've oh I I've, I haven't always been like the best model boyfriend. All right, we've all like. Yeah, we've I'm not all saying I was an their, angel. Like we, throughout our lives, we've all you know we've all taken you know opportunities to do stuff we weren't supposed to be doing, or whether it be like something small or something really big you want to take to the grave with you or whatever, right? But like, and I've been saying this for like at least five years now. Like, I'm good. Like, I don't have any time for anything. Like, all the extra shit, all the... I don't have time to cheat. I don't have time to entertain other women. I don't have the energy to deal with multiple women. I work mad hours. I'm tired. This is my first day off. I'm tired. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to about I still, like, I have to motivate myself to get up, to work out, to eat a healthy breakfast, to figure out what my errands are for today. That's why I was a little late today. Um, and just figure out what I'm going to do for the next two days that I have off. Like, that's how it is day in, day out. Yep. And if I have, if I'm in a relationship, I then have to balance that mm-hmm. to make sure I'm spending, I'm allocating enough time for me and her. And that's how it's been for the past few years. I don't, I know, I already know where there's a will, there's a way. I'm sure there's guys who work just as much, if not more than me. Actually, I do know a few guys who work more than me who are still on that, you know, multiple women life shit. Like, I don't know how they do it. I don't have the energy for it. That's tiring. It's dreamy. I'm burnt out. I'm one of those guys who's like, I've been there. I've done that. I've been with. I've had enough experience to where I don't have, I don't deal with temptation as much as other guys do. I filled my cup for the most part. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he said, my cup run is over. <laughs> yeah, like, I filled my cup for the most part. Do I do Damn, look at him pity. Of course I do. Everybody does. But I have a threshold where I'm like, okay, well, that was nice, but I have no interest in pursuing anything with this with this person if I already have somebody. Yeah. You know, whether the situation's great or not so great. If I'm with somebody, then I'm with that person. And just to, just to, just to be in, just to have that mindset where, you're, you know you're doing the right thing, and they keep pointing the finger. Yeah. Pointing the finger. Or they'll ask you questions that come off accusatory, that come off like you're being interrogated or something like that. I've, that, done, that, I've that, done that dumb shit. It, it's, it's like... It's, a, it's not only... It's offensive. <clears throat> like, <clears throat> excuse me. Looking, at, looking back at the way the things that I used to say, I was like, God, how the fuck did she stay with me as long as she did? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's real dickhead behavior, yeah. you know. What I mean? And I've I've spoken to other people who deal with who dealt with similar situations where they their their boyfriend or girlfriend was cheating, and whenever they tried to um, confront them about the issue and iron things out, that boy that boyfriend or that cheating boyfriend or girlfriend would be real accusatory, real like defensive, deflecting all all the time and all this other stuff. Like it's it's really toxic behavior, and if you want to live as long as you possibly can, and 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 just live your that. best life, you can't have that in your life. You can't figure your shit out. Every yeah, no, but listen, nobody's perfect. <laughs> nobody's perfect. I'm sure every all three of us in this room have things that we don't speak about to other Hell people yeah. because <laughs> we're either embarrassed by it or it's just a little. A little deep dark secret that we just don't want to share because there's no need for it. Yeah. If it's something that bothers you that much to your very like if it bothers you that much seek help or be able to communicate that with your partner so that they know what they're getting themselves into so they don't so they don't wake up finding out that you went through their phone and stole their SIM card. And a lot of times when when somebody goes through your phone, they're always going to find something. Even if they don't even if they even if they don't find what they thought they were gonna find, they're still gonna find 
something as a consolation yeah. prize. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, it could be something that might come off a little suspicious, and it can go either way depending on how much you you trust your partner. Yeah. But you're always going to find something in your partner's phone that you're not going to like. One of the guys I used to work with, uh, my manager told uh, one of the supervisors, "Oh, keep the camera on him and find something to fire him for." Which was, which is, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Dude sucked, but like it was fucked up. And the next day, uh, one of my friends, Jeff, not not Jeff, we know, mm-hmm. um, he was saying he told the supervisor he goes that was fucked up because he said he told him and the manager he goes that was fucked up because he goes if you put the camera on anybody for eight hours, you'll find something to fire them for. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. So it's like if you're looking for something, even like you said, even if something's not there, you can take a a molehill and turn that shit into a mountain. Exactly. You know what I mean. You can find that your significant other is liking a particular guy's a particular guy's picks a little more than you're comfortable with. Look, man, and bring, look and get on there. Maria back knows about, about that. my Ryan Reynolds attention. Why do you got to keep bringing it up? <laughs> hey, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying in general, just an example. Like, there's you can always find shit, but why go into a relationship if you can't trust? Well, I also think a lot of uh, a lot of insecurities and something me and a man have spoken to recently, like one of the issues I'm dealing with, um, forgiving yourself. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like that's a really that's a difficult thing, and when you can't really forgive yourself, that can turn that can spiral into an insecurity. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? So and that and it's unfortunately it's, and it's unfortunate that sometimes it's projected outwards. Like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I can honestly admit that I'm jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, like, you know what I mean? Like, you've got your shit together. You've been saving for a while. Like, you're invested in the stock market. Uh, I don't save anything. Huh? I said I don't save anything. Well, you were. Like, I you, just invest. I don't save. Like I haven't you, spent, a, I haven't saved a dime in years because yeah. I invest. Yeah, like, but like, you're, like, there are things about your life that I wish I would have done. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm not envious. Like, I would never do anything to sabotage the shit you got. But I, mm-hmm. I can admit that I'm jealous. Like, you know what I mean? But I think that admitting, I think admitting that helps my helps our relationship like you know what i mean i'm not looking i'm not like sitting going through greg's instagram going mm, fuck this nigga mm. <laughs> and, like angrily going through stuff like that you know what i mean yeah um like i and like same like it, it's gone from jealousy to admiration like you know what i mean like you work you put in 16 hour days at a job that's not the most that not the easiest you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i admire that like i and like i admire um mandy here She's got her, she's running her own fucking business. Like, you know what I mean? In a, in a, in a position where it's not, it's a, a two year anniversary Thursday. Hey! The what? My two year anniversary Thursday. Oh, shit! <laughs> Just to drop that in. Oh, I, I thought I had a drop for that, but I That's didn't. That's okay. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, that's like, you know what I mean? But I think that's, there's a difference. Like, you can, I think it's okay to be jealous, but not envious. Like, you know what I mean? When you can admit someone's doing something that you wish you could have done. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? But that I think, should motivate you then to get up exactly. and do what you should be doing. It did. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I remember, like, talking, like, yeah, Maria's like, we gotta save, we gotta save, we gotta save. So I started saving. Then looking at our savings, I'm like, God damn, I wish I was doing this shit a long time ago. Like Greg said. Or like, like um, when I told you about getting a 401k and you did it like 11 years later. I was like, Mark, you get a 401k I yet? Mark, you get a 401k yet? I did yet? two years later. Same you thing. It, did, oh. So but you, you were did, at the you job for like forever though before you did it. Yeah, you could have, you probably could have rolled over a lot more than you did. Yeah, I oh god, I have like, a lot of money in my four hundred one k now. Yeah, so you know what I mean. But I had to... you did it when I told you. Uh, that's that stubbornness. Uh, yeah, I just got life insurance. Oh, I got this so good. <laughs> life insurance is a big one. I've been telling yeah, a lot of my just, friends like, yo, y'all need to get life insurance. We don't know the next day. I've been yeah. my friends with kids. I've been um, watching videos about life insurance, reading up about life insurance and stuff, and. I remember watching this video about this guy, he's like a celebrity, and he was talking about how it's crazy because growing up, the people he admired, who was making money and, you know, made a name for themselves and everything, years later, they're elderly, they're messed up, the money, what, what it used to be, they're coming to him for, you know, money for prescription medicine, uh, medical bills, stuff like that. And some people have went on to pass away and their family's asking him for help. It's so crazy when people pass away and nobody has money for a funeral or, you know, to bury someone or 
whatever, like, what were you doing? You know, it's... <sighs> they were living it up. Well, <clears throat> I lose my grandmother as a, as a really, as a prime example. When she retired, um, she had a good amount of, like, bills and stuff like that. So, so she wouldn't, so that wouldn't get passed on to her children. She paid them all off. So, it's just, like, she still has money coming in. And she's, um, she's good financially. But she also has me, Maria, and my aunt to pick up the slack. So, and, like, but she lived a life. Like, you know what I mean? But not only did she live a life, she took care of, she, she took care of me. She's part of the reason that I am who I am. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, my loud mouth and, like, don't give a fuck ways comes from her. The, but, um... She went on vacations, made me want to go on vacation. So, like, now that, like, she's done that, I kind of look at it as, like, as an honor to, like, when she's, like, when she can come to me for help or stuff like that. I, like, I feel honored by the fact that, like, I get to give back. You know what I mean? So, I can understand it, like, when you look at it. But my grandma, I say my grandma lived it up. She worked two fucking jobs. Like, she'd get up, go to work, leave that job, have an hour and a half to get to the other job, and eat in between that, work the other job until 11, 11.30. Go home, get home by like midnight, one o'clock, just to get up and do it all over again. Like Sounds you know what weird. I mean? So like you know what I mean? I think, but I also kind of see what you, but it's the point you're coming from, Greg, when you watch these people. It's like, yeah, you're doing all this. Like, yeah, but are you planning for? I had this conversation with my kids the other day. Well, the same stuff. I mean, you're always like you always talk to your kids about that shit. Like, like I do. Like I remember you talking to talking to Amir and mind about that when they were five. I'm like. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, man, they're fine. But then, like, I see the so result. What? You gotta but, embed it early. I agree. We were, we were going to the hair store one day, and um, the one on American Legion, and these this family mm. came out with bags and bags of sneakers from Expressions. So my son was like, Dad, look at the drip. I'm like, what drip? He's like, all those sneakers they're coming out the store. With. I'm like, all right, you're on the outside looking in, but do you know if these people are renting or buying? Do you know if these people have any money in their savings account? I said, how you know if their mattress ain't on the floor? Like, do they got a passport? Have they ever left the state or the country? I'm like, you're looking some at people the don't even leave. Some people have never left the city. The city that I know. In. So, like, I'm opening, trying to open his mind to different things. And I, and I explained to him, so I'm not trying to, like, say that because they don't have the things that were better or any of that stuff. However, you're looking at these people coming out of the store with sneakers, but they're really not doing anything with their lives. Yeah. They're just buying sneakers. It's crazy. Yeah. It is. It's like, do they even have food in their fridge right now? Like, where are their priorities set up at? I said, now, if you sit down and you think about it, you guys are going on 12. How many countries have you been to compared to your friends who got all the Jordans? I've been to two, and I'm pretty sure your kids have been to more more than I have. (laughs) So I'm like, let's let's balance this out here. Yeah, they might be dripping. My son told me I have no drip. I said, I have no drip, but I'm about to be a homeowner. I have my own business. Your friend's parents are working for other people. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. However... I might not have no drip, but I'm chilling. Well, the word drip is kind of funny to me in general because that's it's like, a new generation. No, no, I mean, but it's like like you're like a you're a business owner. That's 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 real drip. You know right. what I mean? So, I, so I'm trying to talk to an 11 year old and open <coughs> up his mind. It may not make sense to him now, and I tell him this, I tell my kids this all the time. I'm, what I'm trying to teach you guys may not make sense to you now, but when I'm dead and gone, y'all gonna be like, remember when Mommy used to say X, Y, and Z? It makes sense now. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, you know what I mean? I think we had this conversation when we were talking about um, a person who will remain nameless and we were lament, you were lamenting about stuff and I was like, they'll, they'll recognize when they're older. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? The other day, me and Amari, we had a movie date and um, this is my oldest. He's 17. He'll be 18 in July. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and he's like, a hot dog is $7? I was like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, why is the movie so expensive? He's like, yo, a box of candy is $5, almost 6 I was like, yeah, because he was going to buy the, the snacks. And I was like, baby, I got it. Don't worry about it. He was like, why is this stuff so much money? I was like, you see, he was like, we could have went to Dollar Tree and got snacks and brought it in. I was like, you're yeah. right. you right. We could have. So it's just a little stuff like that. He gets it. <clears throat> yeah. He gets it. But I think he also gets it because, like, like again, you, you've, raised, <clears throat> you've raised him to be that way. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So he knows that, like, uh, so, like, if he wanted the drip, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, well, seven dollars, that ain't nothing. Right. Yeah. He's so, like, but he's, he now, he looks at where he's spending his money, and I'd be like, yes, that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> he's not the typical 17-year-old that's just spending, 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 like, 
I told him, you want your car? You save and whatever you save, I'll match it. He's like, okay. Same thing when he has to go school shopping. You're working. So you work, you save your money, whatever you save for school shopping, I'll match it. And that's how we've been doing it since he was 14. You got to teach him responsibilities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Did, um, how was, did your mom or dad teach you any, any like, saving things like that? Or just no. something? <clears throat> All my mother used to say was, put something aside for a rainy day. She didn't say a hurricane, the tsunami <laughs> was going to come and blow my ass away. <laughs> that stuff never made sense to me as a kid, but I get it now. Some people... Good. Some people get in, some people some people don't. Yeah, some people are gonna family, listen, some people aren't gonna care. They spoke in parables. I don't know what the it's, hell she was talking about. To me, it, it's almost like people's addiction with you know. Let me not say addiction, but you know how people love to eat what's bad for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they know it's bad for them, but they're still gonna eat it because it tastes so good. Talking right here. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing it with is. people in their finances. They know what they should be doing with their finances. Yes. But, but they're, gonna, they? they're still going to ignore it. Mm-hmm. Yep. In my line of work, I meet people from different walks of life all the time. And I've lost count of how many times I've um, I've entered somebody's home. I As I'm coming, as I'm walking, so I'll, I'll walk in a, before I walk into someone's home, I might notice their car. And they'll have a nice car sitting outside the house. But you walk in the home, there's no furniture. See? Yeah. There's like three or four kids living there. Um, no furniture in like the foyer. There's no there's no furniture in the living room. There's like a table in the kitchen. You go into mom's room, it's it's straight. It's bedroom set, big screen TV and everything, kids' <clears throat> room, a couple things, but you can skate around their house. If they put ice on the floor, you can skate around their house <laughs> and not hit anything because there's no furniture. I've been to, I've seen, I've come across women who are on Instagram modeling, designer clothing, accessories, and all this other stuff, but, and been to their house, and no furniture. Yeah. <laughs> like, nothing, like, it's all a facade. Yeah, yeah. And people are so caught up in, in looking like they have that quote-unquote trip, and they really don't. Nope. They really don't. It's all a it's all a front to just look like you're doing well for yourself. But really doing well for yourself is just living your best life and knowing that if something goes wrong, you have the money to cover it. Yeah. And it's funny people used to like I used to get clowned for not having they're like, Oh, you ain't got no car. I'm like, Yeah, but you live with your mother. Yeah. <laughs> I was like I was like I was like, I'm living on my own. It was like, so, oh yeah, but you're you're not car is an expense. People so, make it look like you have to have a car to be doing something. Yeah. Do you know what I'm- Having a car is like a child. And someone said to me, it was like, oh, your mattress is on the floor. Stay the more pussy than you do. <laughs> I am. <laughs> but it was just one of those things where it's like, from the outside, like someone could like clown, like, like, well, you're not driving. I'm like, yeah, I got my own place though. Like, oh, you're taking the tea. I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I get the tea to and from where I'm going. I'm making a good amount of money and I go home. My wife doesn't give a shit. The fuck you telling me for? Like, you know what I mean? Like all this, like you said, like a lot but of a stuff. A lot of people have a car and still have to take the tea because of where they work. Yeah, that's that's the other thing. It's so like people tell me like I'll see people in my old building who take the T to and fro, and they're like, it's like it just doesn't make any sense for them to pay five hundred dollars a month for parking. Yeah, it doesn't. Like you know what I mean? They're like, fuck that. I'll just go to Forest Hills. Like I'll they'll drive to Forest Hills, um, and take the train in town because it's like okay, I could pay thirty to a hundred bucks a month for this, and then just take the T in. But it's like that's all fine and well, but like. Excuse me, but it's like a lot of these people, same people, they own their own houses. They can still go on vacation. Their kids are fine. Mm-hmm. Their spouses are fine. Like you know what I mean? Like I've seen people who've had like multiple kids, and they're like, and they're happy. And for them, they don't really care about vacations. They're more happy. Like, like, like Fletcher. Mm-hmm. Like he loves he loves his kids. Like he has five, I think now. Yeah, it's five kids. Mm-hmm. You need a babysitter? Huh? <laughs> 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 Fletcher Hall at her. I feel um, the synergy here. Fletcher Hall at her. So, um, but the funny thing about it was um, listening to um, him talk about his kids and his family, like that's, it sounded like the most rewarding thing he could ever do. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So the vacations don't really mean much to him. Mm-hmm. But like seeing his um, his son 
do well in school or his mm-hmm. daughter um, progressing and growing and things like that. Mm-hmm. To, to him, that's the most amazing thing you, you can do. Like, Amanda has a good balance of that. Like, you know, going on vacation and, like, saving the time and, like, not having a drip to, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, fuck it out. But you still, like you said, how many countries, how many countries have been to in the last two years? Me or me and the kids? You and the kids. Um, exactly. You have to think about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? traveling is my thing. Like, if somebody would have be like, well, you got to pay a million dollars for this. I'm going to do what I got to do to get that million dollar trip. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody has their thing. Some people electronics. Some people clothes. Minus trips. That's like my recharge. Yeah. Like, for like I've had this conversation with, like, people. They go, like, mom, my wife will go, you know, you can buy, you can buy something. Like, I don't want anything. I buy comic books. Like yeah, that, that's, that's, that's your thing. That's your my thing. thing. And it's also tax deductible because I have a right job. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I have, I have stuff like that. Like I have, we go on trips. Like I've been to Hawaii. Some people will never go there. I was and, supposed I, to go this year to see one of my neighbors. But when I saw the tickets, I was like. <laughs> it was totally worth it. Totally <laughs> worth it. Like, like, Maybe next year. Like, yeah. Like my wife's been to DR with her friends. Like Greg's been to DR. I You've been to DR. Um, What's wrong with DR? I don't know. I'm kind of uh, nothing's wrong with it. I just there's nothing that jumps out to me about it. I don't know why. It's just a Caribbean location. I know, and like, so it's probably like the other ones. It's, it's just probably last on my list of places to go. Like I, for me, it was different. Like I don't like I didn't start doing excursions until we went to Mexico, and then I started having like real fun. And then uh, like we used to like obviously it's like I'm in the states in some places I'll go. But I was just kind of leery about going out of the out of the resort on DR because one, I'm not from there, so I don't want to like say anything that's wrong and then like completely offend somebody and end up on a uh, on milk a, carton. Yeah, and I'm black, so it won't be any milk cartons, milk milk cartons for me. But um, so yeah, so like, but we like when we went to Hawaii, like that was fucking great. Like we did, a, we saved the money. We we're just paying it off, but like those memories are gonna last forever. Right. So like so. That's what we do. We like to travel. We won't be able to do it for the next couple of years, but we will. We went to California last year. Fucking phenomenal. Got to see um, Maria. Got to officiate her best friend's wedding. You know what I mean? So, like, that was worth the money to spend and things like that. Like, um, shit, my wedding. And just, like, seeing all my friends, like, happy, for me, that was, like, that was one of my, my favorite things about it. Like, I have pictures with you. And one of my favorite things with uh, Greg during the wedding was he got to be the first person to eat a cupcake and the look on his face as it lit up. <laughs> I was like, Greg, you can go first. Yeah, I was waiting for that. <laughs> he kept going, like, no, you can't have any cupcakes yet. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like, you know, sometimes the little things in life, like I said, everyone has their vices. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, what is your vice, Greg? You don't really seem to like... I think Greg is electronics. Yeah, I'm a tech guy. Yeah, But me? you would think that I, since I'm a tech guy, I have all the alt... I'm freaking Tony Starks or some shit. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. I have a few nice techie things, but I don't go overboard with it. I like Best Buy. Best Buy is like Disney World to me. <laughs> like, See? there's just so much that I like to look at and play with and stuff. But because I'm a modest person, I don't just go in there and just freaking drop a thousand dollars or anything like that. But um, yeah, I like tech. I do like to travel. But I hate flying, oh, so too. I only so take it. I can only do. I can only do it in doses, and I'm slowly getting out of the mindset of I'm only. I can only do like four or five hours, and that's it. Dog, you I'm need slowly. To get- I'm slowly getting to the realization that there's places outside of the Caribbean. I'm slowly getting there too. <laughs> like I just slowly. Walked out, I just walked out. Like you can get to London in like five hours. Yeah. Yeah. Like London's only five. When I went to Nigeria last year, that plane ride was a bitch. I forgot you went there. Oh my goodness. All right. Again, another place like that's a place that people would love to go to that they may never get to. Like you've gone to places like that. You know what I mean? That's like that's dope to me. Yeah. Like I remember you um like being excited the first time you got to go to Trinidad, the Carnival of Trinidad. Oh, that was the best. You know what I mean? So that's like for me, that's fucking cool. Like you know what I mean? Like but again, like it's. I don't know. Like I, I, I love shit like that. But I let me tell you. Gotta get back to the docket. Oh, <laughs> but I don't. One day I want to go to like Bora Bora. Or something. Me too. But oh, where do I know that? Where's Bora Bora? 
Which if you want to, it's like French Polynesia. That oh, area. yes, 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 if yes. You, for that trip, you better put aside like a day and a half getting there. <laughs> yeah. I think the most practical thing to do is to like plan, plan a location before you get there. Mm-hmm. Like on the way over there, stay in this country for like a day or two. And then when you're done doing what you need to do, you already have another trip planned from that country to French Polynesia. Yeah. Um, I know when uh, Valkyrie finishes school, like, we're going to take, like, a big trip. Yeah. And I think we might go to, like, Italy or something like that. Or she wants to do, like, a European trip. Like we... I want to go. I don't have to be with you guys, but I want to go. Yeah. Like, what's one thing that we, we um, there are certain people we won't vacation with because it's like, if, like, there's been times when me and my wife have been like, oh, let's go. We're going to do this. Oh, we're going to stay in hotel. All right, bye. <laughs> we just leave. All right, brokey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, have you ever been on a trip with someone who end up, they always end up having to ask for a loan? Uh, or they always do something or they, they always have some shit with them where yes. they're never would they're always the last one to be ready. Yes. We all made plans. When we get off the air, nah, I'm going to tell y'all like, a story. Because <laughs> Greg, you remember, you've gone on, you've gone on a few trips. I've gone me. on, yeah. yeah. We like, we kind of like, it's funny. Weird. We're good. Yeah. But I I remember planning one trip and I was going to have like a relative come with us. But because I knew his track record, I was like, yo, <laughs> you can I roll with it. us. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm going to let you know right now because I knew he didn't have money like that. You're going to need X amount of dollars. Yeah. Starting. That's a starting amount. You need <laughs> X amount of dollars to be able to do everything that we do. Yeah. He's like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Da, da, da. Never heard from him again. <laughs> and you know what? I don't mean to laugh, but you know what? It's good that I had that conversation because he probably would have came and then would have ruined the morale yeah. of the trip because don't, you don't want to be that, that person who doesn't have any money on a trip. Why'd you come if you don't have any money? So the first time I went to Hawaii with Lavelle, that happened to me. Yeah. We both ran out of money. Mm-hmm. And so thankfully, uh, uh, he got a loan from somebody. Mm-hmm. But after that, mm-hmm. I was like, never again. I will never, I was like, I will never go anywhere and be a burden to somebody else ever again. Fuck that money. Like, it was just, and the one other thing about vacations and stuff like that, and we had this conversation um, off the air, I don't, but like, being able just to be like, yeah, I'm staying in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From my sole location. Yeah, and um, I remember when. So every time me and Maria go on vacation, you if it's, if it's during the NBA season, I take one day to myself and I just stay in. I don't do anything. I do. I have a chill day on all my vacations. I don't care where I go, but my slow location is just gonna be like, mm, if I want to get up, I get up. I don't have one. Yeah, okay. and so we went to um, we was in Disney, and they went to go. It was like late night. It was like the Knicks were playing. It was like the first NBA game I got to watch all year, and I was like, so I was like, all right, have fun. And then she was Maria's like, all right, I'll see you later. And then one of the guys was like, wait, what? She goes, he's like, what, Mark's not coming? He's like, she's like, no. He, that was an option? She goes, she goes, yeah, we don't need to be up up each other's assholes the whole time. There are certain things that, sh- like, we want to do together. But if, like, she wants, for example, uh, we went to, uh, we went to California, we went to the San Diego Zoo. We went on the gondola from, like, one end to the, of the park to the other one. I don't do heights. I don't do heights well at all. It's just with that rickety fucking thing with the wind and all that. Like, I'm hugged up on the pole, head down. She's like, look. I'm like, no. She's like, look up. I'm like, no. I'm not looking. I'm good. <laughs> and then, like, and then it, then it, like, it, like, stopped and shook. I went, ah! <laughs> But, like, you know what I mean? But I did that for her because it was something she wanted to do. Like, you know what I mean? So you kind of fucking, you just, you just get over it. You know what I mean? But I also hate the people when it's like, we have to do this together. I'm like, all right, cool, but there's going to be some things that I want to do on my own or some shit that I just don't want to fucking do. Like, you know what I mean? So, it's shit like that, man. But um, also, but to your point, Greg, know who you're going on vacation with. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when we went to Vegas, like, we had a fucking blast. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there were certain things we didn't get to do because, like, we were still, like, kind of young and trying to, like, figure everything out. But we still had a great time. When we went to New York, we didn't have a lot of money, but we made that shit work. We had a, yeah, we we had a fucking blast like you know what i mean mm-hmm. because we kind of we all knew each other we all knew the expectations and things like that and 
<laughs> we all shared a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. two people on the bed. Two, no, one person. It was a like bed floor, bed floor. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we make it work. Yeah, man. You know, but I am. I'm. I'm trying to plan out a trip for my winter vacation this year. Nice. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going yet. Um, definitely, it's gonna be in the Caribbean. But it's going to be a, a, a bit farther out than what I'm used to going in the Caribbean. So. Break the comfort zone a little bit? Yeah. Trying to, you know, put some new stamps in my passport. But I'm, I am going to try to um, try to do it, you know, because it's, it's been a while since I had, like, a vacation vacation. So yeah. So I'm, I'm going to see some new places, do a couple of things. I'm still going to chill like a motherfucker, though, because I'm not that guy who goes on a trip and has to do two or three excursions a day. I might do like two excursions and then just chill the entire trip. Yeah. That's about right. That's, like, that's my solo location. Like just being able to like sit out and like, cause I read. So like mm-hmm. being able to sit out somewhere like with the sun or like just like the sound of the ocean or just the sound of the fucking air conditioner in your, in your own room and just sit and read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and I don't mind going on vacation by myself. I've been on vacation. I've been in the Caribbean and places like that by myself a few times. Yeah. So I don't even have any reservations about that. It's just I just want to make sure I, I want to make sure I don't choose the wrong location because there's some locations where it's best for, you know, for families to go to, and then places for like young people to go to, and place for like older people to go to, and place for single people to go to, yeah. stuff like that. I just want to make sure I find a place that's just fun, you know? Yeah. I or dig that. Um, coming up towards the end of the show, but we got another five minutes before we um before I gotta shut it down. Uh, try not to bring, <clears throat> try not to go over too long, too far over an hour anymore. Uh, talked about this briefly with Manda a couple of days ago, and I think Greg might have seen this as well. The conversation when someone goes, "All men suck" or "All women suck." Mm-hmm. Um, can we quit that? So I don't think all. Women or men suck. I feel like people just have their sucky ways. Yes. Um, I did have a moment where I was like, fuck all men. They all suck, bastards. But then I was like, yeah, that's not true because I know some dope ass men that are out there that aren't doing the fuck boy shit. And so I had to, you know, retract that statement. So no, all men don't suck. There are trash men, there are trash women. So there's just trashy people out there. I don't break it down to just specifically it being yep. all men suck or all women suck. It's just, I feel like the trashy people are outnumbering the good people. Yeah. You know what I think it is? And um, and just, I don't, it's selfishness that I've noticed. I don't know if you deal with this. Well, you obviously do. But like, I've noticed that people aren't necessarily idiots. They're selfish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, selfish and they're cowards. Yeah. Well, so I found this. Uh, I sent this to you, actually. Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good bead on things. Uh, well, why? Why the big secret? People are smart. They can handle it. The person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. I. I it's hundred percent true. People are fucking trash. Like you know what I mean. Like and it's just. I've got my trashy ways, and sometimes I do selfish things, like, you know what I mean? But I, we all, I think we, we all, all do. do. Yeah, but I think I think the difference is, like, doing something, recognizing it, and then not doing it again. Like, I watch people on the road, and I'm like, yeah, this is why I don't have my license, because y'all motherfuckers are crazy. <laughs> like, watching someone, like, specifically cut somebody off, like, if they were on um, the Jamaica way. Mm-hmm. For, for people who don't know the Jamaica way, it's got a bunch of twists yeah, and turns. that's not smart. Yeah, and if you don't know where you're going, you should probably hang on to the right, so hang on the right. The way Maria's place goes. If you don't know, you it's easy to get into an accident on there if you're not paying attention. Easy. And you'll watch someone go from the far left lane and then speed up and then cut over immediately. You're like, yo, you're gonna kill somebody doing that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, we were on a, on the way to my old gig, and someone was in the far left lane, and we were we were me and um Valkyrie on the right. So we're you know light turns green, stop turn it right. This person sped up and then cut her off. Like almost knocked us knocked us off the fucking road because they were just they were in such a rush. But it was late at night. This person literally could have waited three seconds and then just gone behind us. But it's like this it's the stupidity and the ignorance and stuff. And they're like watching people on their phones on the crosswalk mm. and then get mad when they're like, "Do you oh, see me? 
Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. do you see me walking? Motherfucker, do you realize you're on a busy intersection on your phone? Like that, I don't think people realize that crosswalk shit doesn't doesn't necessarily work in the way they think it does. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. should, but it doesn't. <laughs> people are fucking selfish assholes. I'm trying not to use the c word anymore, and I almost did. <laughs> but I don't know, man. Like whenever I hear someone go, "Oh, men are trash," I'm like, "No, all women are trash." No, and then it's funny. And then like I love the people who will go, "I had one bad one bad relationship." Oh, men suck. I'm like, all right. Was it all him? Was right. it all I her? Think, so for me, I think people just also don't accept some of the things that they put into whichever relationship to make it trashy also. Mm-hmm. Like everybody plays a part. Yeah, that's true. Their, every action has a reaction. Not to say that just because you reacted in the wrong way that it made it right, but not everybody can think logically when they're upset. Yes. So every action has a reaction. So I'm pretty sure that if you had a trash relationship, you had a part of the trash behavior as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, oftentimes there's a dominant aggressor. Yeah. But if you stuck around, then you entertained it. And exactly. the only way to entertain it is by kind of stooping down to their level sometimes. Yep. And that's or, when the whole, when it's done, you forgiving yourself and all of that. Because I told them, you know, some people know what happened and they're like, yo, why did you tolerate that? So now I'm going through the whole forgiving myself, dealing with the foolishness and entertaining it because I kind of left. Yeah. So, what's the other one on the docket? The regrets. Uh, I think do we kind of we kind of touched on it a bit. Like, oh, no, no. We how do you deal with like? No, no, but how do you deal with like regrets and relationships, or just like life in general? Like, how is something? I try to find the lesson in it, so that you can learn from it and grow instead of beating yourself up about it. Because if you can, I feel like if you continuously beat yourself up about your mistakes, you're just gonna make yourself depressed and sad. I like being happy, so yeah. you got to find a lesson in it. All right, yep, yeah, this was wrong. What did I learn from it? There was a positive and there's a, there's a negative. Face, deal with the negative, and it's okay. What did I get out of that negative part? How do I, if that happens again in the future, because things can happen again, what am I going to do differently? You got anything, Justin Gray? Uh, I'm kind of in the same, I'm pretty much in the same boat as Amanda. Uh, cop out. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, if, hey, if we can relate, we can relate. Yeah, we're on the um, same page. Like, I mean, you just gotta find. Them. I'm just all right. So, I've had good relationships. I've had a bad relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've learned from that relationship. Um, going into it, there were things that I didn't know about myself that I know now. Mm-hmm. I have deal breakers that I didn't have before. Um. And, you know, I'm just happy I was able to, you know, finally, like, I'm still getting, I'm still in the process of getting past it, but as long as I can wake up every morning and know I don't have, like, I didn't suffer any, like, ridiculous consequences from entertaining it for as long as I did, and, you know, I'm healthy, I don't have, like, any court orders or anything, or, you know, like, I have, I still have, I'm still somewhat whole, you know, and can I say I have, like, regrets? When I think back, I don't think I have, when I think about things I'm, I might be, I might regret, I think about, like, my reaction to certain stuff. Like, when, yeah. when this person did this, and I reacted like this. in a way that was unbecoming of the kind of person I am, that's what I regret. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, I remember times where I got so upset about something, I called her out her name. Ooh. You know what really? I mean? Really? Yeah. Like, like it, I, I remember speaking to, um, like, just, just being so upset that I was speaking in a way to a woman that I've never spoken to a woman before. Yeah. You know what I mean? And... I regret that, you know, there's times where just little stuff happened and because it became, it became a a trigger for me, I overreacted or I reacted in a way that, you know, just wasn't that necessary. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I think back, those are the things I regret. Yeah. But like the whole relationship, not really because like, 
there were a lot of good times. There were a lot of good times. There were a lot of relaxing times. There was a lot of times where I felt like, you know what, this ain't perfect, but, you know, I'm still in this. I still really, really care for this person and whatnot. Um, and that's it. And that's what nostalgia does to you. It's very tricky. And I'm trying to remind myself of this all the time. When you think back to relationships that weren't good or were good or whatever, but they're in the past, a lot of times your mind will trick you into only thinking about the good. You're going to think about how bomb the sets was or this amazing trip you guys went on or this amazing moment that you guys um, had or some milestone that you guys, you know, met or whatever, like you'll think about all that stuff, but you'll forget about the really pivotal moments that really like brought the relationship down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it just kind of like ruin your mood or your attitude and stuff. And that's a tricky thing. You know, that's what causes a lot of people, um, to, um, con con um, con constantly go back to mm -hmm. situations that don't work. It's the sunken cost theory. It's a, it's a fallacy where people, because people have invested so much into something, yeah. they have so much faith in it, they, they've invested so much money in it, they invested so much energy in it, it can be all three of those things, or, or one or two of those things, they have a hard time letting go. Yeah. And... I've heard of people who've been together off and on for like 20 years. <laughs> like that's a, that's a life. That's, that's damn near a lifetime. Yeah. Yep. You know, you're missing out on having children. You're missing out on marriage. You're missing out on like a, a, a nice, long, healthy relationship. healthy relationship. You're missing out on plenty of good times by constantly going back to a relationship that you and your partner know does not work. But because you guys are so, invested in making it work even though you guys don't fit years go by and time and is wasted, wasted and you, you know can't get back exactly so like it's it's like when you start a business you invest so much time money and energy into it and it's not working but they tell you when it's not working there's ups and downs in business oh. you got to keep going with it keep going with it keep going with it yeah but there has to be a threshold at some point where you're like you know what it's been this many years it's still not working at some point you got to know when to throw in the towel yep yeah towel. and you know it's it's just so so bottom line do i have regrets yes and it's it's my regrets are in the form of what i just explained where <laughs> You know, I regret how I react to, cer to certain things. I probably should have been more sensitive, more... Um, there's times where I could have been more accountable as well. But everything else, there were, there were, a, lot of, there were a lot of good times. So I don't, I, don't, I, don't regret, I don't regret that relationship or any other relationship. Because it's not like my last relationship was the only one that wasn't good. There was relationships before that that wasn't all that great neither. But... I don't regret any of them. Well, I think that comes a lot of that comes with maturity, though. Yeah. I sometimes I feel that we don't. Um, I don't think there's anything bad. With, I don't think there's anything wrong with looking at the bad things that may have happened in a relationship mm -hmm. because it kind of sh shapes and molds you and makes you the person that you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like you like you've like you've grown from your last relationship and the one before that and the one before that and not even just romantically like just from things like you do with like your friends mm -hmm. and families and things like that. But I'm um, since we're talking about a romantic thing like. Um, I've learned that uh, sometimes, even when you know you are a thousand percent right, sometimes you still have to apologize. Like you yeah, know, what just I mean? because not even just in like, and not even just like, oh, I'm sorry, but like sincerely do something because you don't know what this, what, how this person may feel. Like you know what I mean? And just because, like, there's been a lot of times, like shit, recently over the weekend, um, me and Maria got into a spat. Like you know what I mean? And I thought I was a thousand percent right. But at the end of the day, it's like, all right, you may think you're a thousand percent right, but do you actually know that? I did. So I apologize because realistically, I don't know what the fuck. It, I don't know what I, I'm hearing everything she's saying, but am I really listening to it? You know what I mean? Because again, being stubborn, I'm the god of stubbornness, who I am. But it's like, so I had to take a step back, take some time. And I said to her, like, look, I'm sorry if I came off like an asshole. I'm sorry if I sound bitchy. Like, you know what I mean? Because. What's the point of being angry and missing out on all these fucking good times because you're too stubborn 
to like recognize that maybe you're wrong here. You know what I mean? So I ain't like, apologizing. <laughs> Alright, man, this has been the old man Wade show. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker, man. <laughs> I'm not. You're gonna take this my bad and you're gonna go. Uh, my bad. Uh man, tell everyone when they can find you. I don't know. I have to look it up. <laughs> Didn't we just have this conversation? Greg, you got anything to promote? Get life insurance. <laughs> Damn it, Wade!